In this video, we're going to talk about how to, how to practice with intervals, how to use them, how to construct them, how to identify them in cases where they may not be the easiest things in the world to just glance at and see. So let's, let's uh, give ourselves some examples. I'm going to start at a baseline of assuming that you have gotten to know your intervals to the point where you can just glance at this, at least if it's legible, you can see that that's an E above a G, and you know that that's a major sixth. That's the, that point is the prerequisite for what we're going to do. We're going to be talking about more complicated things than that, okay? You must be able to see that. If you're not there yet, you have, whether it's worksheet drill, there are various online programs you can use, various other sorts of computer programs, flashcard drill with a friend, with a tutor, what have you. You must get to this point where you can just glance at that, and you know that that's a major sixth. Now, let's suppose that, that is to say, any two notes with no accidentals. Now suppose that we've got an accidental. How do we go about figuring out what that interval is? Well, hopefully, just based on the spacing, we can glance at it and see it's a fourth. One, two, three, four. We can double check that. Now, how do you figure out what this interval is? Well, you always start from the case in which there are no accidentals, everything being based on this warped notational system around C major. So imagine that that's not there. What kind, of, uh, what kind of fourth is it from F up to B? Well, that's what I said you should have as a prerequisite. That you should just be able to see and know augmented fourth, okay? Now I've raised the lower note. So the interval that's one half step smaller than an augmented fourth is a perfect fourth. Similarly, Oh, that's the same problem, really. Still, oh, so what? We'll do the same thing twice. So, B flat to F. Well, if you know that B to F is a diminished fifth, you've taken the lower note and you've put it down, you've made the interval one larger, so now instead of a diminished fifth, you're talking about a perfect fifth. Let's keep going. Suppose you've got that. Well, this is easy. Since they're both sharps, you can ignore both of them. That would be a minor third, throw sh two sharps and throw a sharp in front of each note. It's still a minor third, similarly. What have you? If it's the same accidental in, in front of each note, it's as if there were no accidentals, that, in, that interval is a perfect fifth. <clears throat> now, what if I've got something a little bit more evil, like this? Okay, now there are two ways of approaching this, and there, it kind of works out to the same thing. First, we can ignore all the accidentals, and we see that's a minor sixth. Then we say, okay, we, we've got two accidentals, so those don't do anything. That just shifts both down by a half step, but it preserves the interval of a major sixth. Now we lower the lower note, that makes the interval one bigger than a major sixth, which means we're dealing with an augmented sixth. Uh, and actually the other way is so close to being the same thing, I won't even, there's no point in talking about it. Uh, we can do this with any set of intervals. So for example, here's another nasty one. We take everything else away from an A up to an F, the base interval is a minor sixth. Two sharps preserve it as a minor sixth. We, now we raise the lower note, that makes the interval one smaller, one smaller than a minor sixth is a diminished sixth. Now be very careful. If you're, used, if you're kind of familiar with intervals, but especially if you're used to thinking about them in terms of an interval, of, 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 a, of an instrument. For example, the piano. So if you think of that in, interval, of the augmented sixth there, and you think about playing this note on the keyboard and playing that note on the keyboard, you're probably used to thinking of that interval as a minor seventh. And in fact, as you can easily verify from the chart, the augmented sixth, which is one half step larger than a major sixth, has the same number of half steps as a, major, as a minor seventh. Those intervals sound the same. They, again, are enharmonically equivalent. Minor seventh is an incorrect answer for this interval. It may sound the same, but this is not any kind of a seventh because one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a sixth. Similarly, 
this diminished sixth sounds exactly like a perfect fifth. And if you're picturing what keys you'd play on the piano and what you would normally call the interval between those keys, you're going to get it wrong. You have to do it based on the actual notation. So a bit of a, 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 bit of a caution there. Sometimes more knowledge and more practice. I mean, ultimately, that's going to serve you well. But you just have to get over some hurdles that can potentially trip you up on, on the way. Having that kind of knowledge, that ability to visualize things is actually a great asset. Uh, you just have to be careful with it. Now, uh, OK, so similarly, suppose that instead of an I identification exercise, you're given a, a construction exercise. So say I ask you, write a minor sixth above. So let me make that a little bit more legible. Suppose I ask you to write a minor sixth above that note. So what are you going to do? You're just going to follow the same steps in, in reverse. Pretend that that sharp's not there and write, I mean, it's a sixth. So it's a sixth above is always going to be some kind of NF. The only question is what you're doing with accidentals. And from an A without accidentals up to an F, that, of course, would be a minor sixth. So to preserve that minor sixth, when the lower note gets lower, gets raised, you just Throw in a sharp, okay? Let's do another one. Suppose that, oh, let's do a nasty one. How about a doubly augmented fifth below? Just to pick, pick something. Oh, and let's, let's, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, so first of all, because it's a fifth below, one, two, three, four, five, I can just write in that G. I don't know what accidentals I might want yet, but I know I want to write that G. Now, from the regular, D down to a G would be a perfect fifth. An augmented fifth would be one bigger. A doubly augmented fifth is two half steps bigger. So that just means I throw in a double flat, okay? And so forth like this. That's the concept of how you work out these kinds of intervals. Now, you, you'll probably need to practice this. And if this flew by a little quick for you, you may want to meet with a tutor or something like that to go over this material. One of the other things I want to uh, mention, though, is this gives us a much faster, now that we have intervals, we have a much faster and more efficient way of doing one of the exercises that we did before. And you might want to go back and redo that worksheet. So you remember when you were told, say, something like, you were given that. So think of the major scale of E flat major, write me the subdominant scale degree. Okay, so now instead of writing out the whole step scale, oh, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C flat, up there, instead of writing that all up in your head, you can just think of an interval because you should know the intervals among scale degrees and especially the intervals to tonic. That's very straightforward. You should know that for each of the scale degrees. So the subdominant in major is a major sixth above the tonic. So just picture that E flat there to yourself. You know, because it's a sixth, that you want some kind of a C. E to C is a minor sixth. E flat, your actual starting note. Here, let me just actually write this, even though in your, you should be just visualizing this in your head. You don't need to write anything yet. So you're imagining some kind of an E up to six is up to C is some kind of a sixth. Your actual, and that's a minor sixth. Your actual starting point is an E flat. That makes it a major sixth. A major sixth is what you want. That's your answer you write down your C, and you don't have to bother with the, with the scale. You can leap right to any note in the scale that you want using intervals. Now, again, just to, uh, just to reinforce, the, uh, the prerequisite to this lesson is being able to just glance at the staff, and if there are no, uh, if there are no accidentals, everything based on C major, you can see through this warped space and C major third, sorry, <laughs> Minor third, major seventh, perfect fifth, diminished fifth. You just, so long as you've got treble clef there, you can just see that stuff. That stuff's just apparent to you. You know that. You need to practice until you're at that point. Because if you have to think about this stuff, you are going to be, uh, it's like later in the semester, it'll be like trying to study Shakespeare if you still have to think about C-A-T spelling cat. You just have to see this stuff and perceive it immediately without thinking. 
that's it for this.